I have a project built around the very common 160 by 128 pixel LED display, and I needed to lay out the graphics design for it. Of course, there are any number of tools that you can use to do this, but in my case, I wanted something that would allow me to easily and quickly make changes and try different arrangements. What I came up with is simple. It uses PowerPoint, although you can probably use these same techniques in Google Slides or Keynote. To begin, start a new PowerPoint file with a single slide, and under the Design menu, Slide Size Command, change the slide size to Custom, and select a width of 16 inches and a height of 12.8 inches. What we are doing here is making the slide the same size as our display with a unit of a tenth of an inch per pixel. If you have a different size display, just adjust the width and height accordingly, sticking to the tenth of an inch per pixel scale. Select Ensure Scale on the next prompt. Next we need to set Snap to Grid so that everything we draw will be forced to comply with a tenth of an inch setting. To do this, go to the View menu and select the menu drop-down under Show. Turn on Snap Objects to Grid and select a tenth of an inch for the grid settings. You can also turn on Display Grid on Screen if you wish. Begin laying out your graphics using shaded rectangles. Fixed space fonts are easy, just make a rectangle that corresponds to character heights. For example, characters in the standard font in the Adafruit GFX library are 6 pixels wide by 8 pixels tall, so make a rectangle 6 tenths of an inch wide and 8 tenths tall. Scale accordingly for double and triple size characters. You can make rectangles a single pixel wide or single pixel tall and then stretch them out to make graphics lines. For everything else, just create rectangles of the appropriate width and height, remembering that each pixel corresponds to a tenth of an inch on your slide. You can also try different colors if you want, although in my case I was mostly focusing on scaling and positioning objects. The first advantage of this method really comes into play when you're rearranging items. Forcing the objects to be snapped to the grid ensures that they stay aligned with the occasional Microsoft glitch. Sometimes it doesn't snap perfectly to the grid, but that's not a big deal. If you tried to do this realignment work in a photo editor, or worse, in Microsoft Paint, you'd have to erase everything and redraw it. Here, you just move items around. The second advantage becomes evident when you are finished and need to generate the size and position data for your Arduino code. Just select the item, select Shape Format, and then the menu drop-down under Size and Select Position. Take the Height, Width, Horizontal, and Vertical Position values, multiply them by 10, and there you have it, the four pieces of data that you need for the Fill Rectangle command in your code. Here's the slide for a detailed graphics display that I recently created for a radio project. I've got some custom-sized characters and artwork here, along with a lot of text information. I played around with this layout a lot before settling on this version. Using this PowerPoint slide technique made the process fast and easy. And here's what the final version looks like on the Adafruit display. That's it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the other videos on my channel.